Praise the Lord. Dr. Thomas Manton IV here. God bless you. I'm speaking about prayer. I feel a very deep river of God. I've been in a conference um, this week in the city with our Archbishop, uh, speaking days in his conference on prayer. I, I told him I was thrilled when I saw that the title of the conference was Prayer. Uh, usually it's called Revival Week, you know, Revival Conference. And that's great, but I want to tell you the key to revival is prayer. Let me give you some keys from the Holy Ghost first. Let's just, let's just get right into it. Uh, number one, uh, prayer is to be a dialogue, not a monologue. Not, my name is Jimmy, gimme, gimme, gimme. And one that I wrote myself called, my name is Honey, where's my money? You know, money prayers, victim prayers. I just need, I need help, 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 help. That's not the only reason you approach God, you know. Think about it. I'm live on Facebook once again. I haven't been doing this in a while. I've been mostly filming uh, for television. And we have so many uh, in the loop that are being edited for release from the last several weeks. Some very amazing, amazing messages from heaven are coming out. So stay tuned for those. And those of you are, you are on my YouTube channel, please do share the channel with people and um, let them also partake. Uh, some of the videos of late have started getting many thousands of views, some upwards uh, pushing toward 8,000 views plus. I haven't looked at the stats lately, but it's even higher than that. It's going. Some of them are going, especially the prophecy videos. It seems people love prophecy more than they love teaching, but uh, I believe God will bring that around full circle where um, people will be as much into teaching as they are into prophetic words. Anyway, God had me. Uh, you'll see the video and the, clip, the clips of it, the short clips of the specific prophecies will be released online, you'll see them. I don't want to uh, tell the whole story again, but the Lord had me declare some things over Kenya on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, today's Thursday now. Today was supposedly the, the chaos day where there was demonstrations, so everybody went, you know, out, out of the out country and didn't do anything in the city. So it kept us from going back to do the next uh, meeting today. So I'm here in the studio, but I feel the, the anointing to teach people about prayer. Prayer is a dialogue. D-I means two. D-I in the negative way is D-I division. Or D-I-E, die. But it has a very powerful meaning in the positive, which is two. The two become one. It's a two-way street. And there's a highway of holiness. There's a highway of dimension, a dimension of communication between the Holy One and you, the Holy Son, or if you're a lady, the daughter of God, where you've got to listen to what God is saying. I told a story in one of the meetings, and you'll see the video coming out soon. The Lord um, had me share this story that the man who built the largest Christian church on planet Earth, he's almost 100,000 people inside, he, he um, had a young man come to him, and he asked the young man, hey, uh, What's happening with you? And he began to ask him some very serious questions. And the young man began to explain how hard things were in his town. 
And he began to ask him, like, what are you doing and all that? And the man of God told him, this is the, the builder of the largest church, Christian church on planet Earth in Abuja, Nigeria, Dr. Paul Inenshe. And he said to this young man, no, I can't accept that. Go, you're supposed to take over that town. You're supposed to raise up the thing. Let's see if you can do it. Go do it. I give you my blessing. Go do it. And most people would either leave the town uh, go back and struggle and claim to be a victim of all the demonic forces going on in the city. Uh, but this, this young man took the challenge. A noble, serious man. He went into prayer and fasting. You see, this is what gives the victory. You, and, 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 and he began to break the powers of darkness. Then the city changed. It a great, it's a great testimony. It's a great story. The city began to change, everything changed, and he came back to the apostle and told him in, in Abuja, Dr. Anenche, and told him, hey, this is what God has been doing. And, and you know, they were all rejoicing. Said, so now, you're a good soldier. See, the only way you could be a good soldier in the realm of the spirit, so the Lord is showing us that it's prayer and fasting that takes us into the realm of the spirit, not just so that you can get a breakthrough in your personal life, but that, and that's, that's applicable, that helps. But also that you can begin to be effective in service in the kingdom. Prayer is a weapon of warfare. Kalabasha, the angel of the Lord's right here. Ayaka, angelosa, right here. Flash of light. Every time I go on in the studio here, the angels are here, they show up. Evidently, heaven wants me to be broadcasting every day. I thought I was just uh, <clears throat> returning some calls, doing some notes, posting some things online, uh, some correspondence and all that, and I felt, no, I have to come on and do a broadcast here. So here we are. This is the purpose of my life, to be ministering as God's prophet to the nations of the world. And to as many millions, millions of people as we possibly can in the shortest amount of time, through every available means of media, in every great way possible to reach the most amount of people. Uh, that's one of my vision statements. Prayer is not just a, a way to get something from God from Him alone, from His hand. It's a way to get Him to come upon your life and touch you. And this is the thing that people don't understand. The intimacy factor, the power factor, the glory factor. And I said this in the conference, the best way uh, to pray is to pray that the Holy Spirit fills you and possesses you to overflowing, that the glory comes on your life. But now there's another side to God in the kingdom from his word, truthfully, that we need to also um, work according to principles. And um, work the laws of God. So what am I saying? Prayer doesn't do everything. Otherwise, why would he tell us to tithe? Why would he tell us to do different things? And I don't have time to go in them. You know from the Bible, there's a lot of instructions of actions to take, things to do, things not to do, what to do. A. Hey, And those help you get ahead. But if you want to pray for anything, pray for the glory of God to come on your life. Number one. Number two. It, number one, it's a dialogue. It's a two-way street. It's a, two, it's a conversation. Not a speech you give to God, but you, you expect him also to talk back to you. Like, a, like he said, he spoke with Moses and he spoke with Abraham as his friend. Jesus in John 15 also called us his own friend. So, uh, you know, it's more to it than just like petition kind of prayers. We need to also interact with heaven that we can uh, really um, get filled with the Holy Ghost and the glory of God. You understand? Number two, dialogue. Number one, dialogue. Back and forth, a conversation. Number two. The power of prayer, effective prayer, real prayer, what it, how to do it.
strategies for praying correctly. You know, the scripture said, Father, teach us to pray, right? The model prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus said. Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let things be done on earth as they are in heaven, which is glorious, not impoverished. Prosperous, not lacking. In every kind of way. And um, then give us our provision and then forgive us as we forgive others. And then we don't walk in the ways of evil. We're delivered from all evil, in fact. Yeah? And then his is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Think about that. So, um, dialogue, two-way street, the prayer, the model prayer. Jesus said, pray like this, what are the prayer that I just told you about. And then these things will begin to manifest. Now, you can't pray like correctly and then still be like all messed up. Uh, for a long time, maybe for a minute or two, but after a while, hopefully a short while, things will begin to progress and break through and change for you for the better. And that really is the way that God, of course, has ordained us to live. Can you say amen? So, number three, number two, pray for the glory of God to come upon your life. Uh, number three, the model prayer. You know, look at the five or six or seven things that are in there. Write a list of them and say, I need to have these things when I'm praying correctly. Number four, believe God that he will direct your paths. Acknowledge him in all your ways, Proverbs says. Is it Proverbs 4, 5, and 6? Yes. Yeah, it's Proverbs 4, 5, and 6. Says, Acknowledge him in all your ways and he'll direct your paths. You need God to direct your path. And then, of course, he shows us his way by his word. Psalm 119. I was sharing this in the conference. You'll see the video coming soon. The Lord said, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Direction comes from God when we pray. And here's another thing. Number five, don't do anything unless you've heard from God. But when he speaks... It gives you his clear direction. Now you can move in that thing and it will, it will prosper and succeed. In fact, a matter of fact, once God speaks, we'll make this number six, point number six. Once God speaks to you in the realm of the spirit by prophecy or through prayer or through your communication with him, then you'll begin to see the reality, hopefully, you'll see it, that you're responsible now to do that thing that he's told you to do. Now, now that's the purpose of your life. That's the commission he's giving you. What to do. Uh, some people swing at things and try to do things that God never told them to do. Well, be humble enough to adjust yourself and say, Lord, if I wasn't supposed to do exactly that or go in that particular direction or flow in this particular way or be in this particular connection, environment, city, association, environment, atmosphere, connections with people. If that wasn't, and it might have been good. See, there's always things that are good that stop you from the better. Yes? Prayer and communication with God will take you from what's good and take you into what's better. Say a big amen to that. You know, you have to walk in the direction... So the direction that God's ordained. So God may lead you into a different way, a different place, a different place, a different grace, a different face, faces, different people, different connections. Embrace it. Don't stay stuck where you've been all your life. Sometimes you're stuck because you're, 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 you're just not in the right uh, thing. You're not lined up perfectly according to the plan of God for the mission he has for you. You understand that? And it could be a very good thing, but look at the results. See, sometimes we're very uh, 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 hesitant to look at the results of what's going on around us. 
Whatever environment you're in or atmosphere you're in will actually produce a certain amount of results or lack of results of what you need and want. And then you'll, you'll, begin, you'll begin to uh, uh, see that you're operating in something that's not the best. So what you need to do is assess all that and, and in, a, in an objective way and humbly and realistically say, I need to make some changes and adjustments and then go to God. Point number seven, go to God and ask him for what it is he wants you to be doing specifically, exactly by priority uh, above everything else and you focus and work on that. Man, another principle that my, dear, my dearly beloved uh, apostle, an older man now, great, great servant of God says this, been my friend for thir over 30 years, I've listened to a lot of things he said that are very powerful. And he said, uh, the principle from Mark chapter 6, Jesus was barely tolerated, even mocked and rejected at Nazareth where he came from. And the Bible says he could there do no mighty works, except he laid his hands on a few sick folks and healed them of minor ailments. But then he went to where he was celebrated, honored, and revered and renowned and, and respected and honored and people wanted to pull from the glory and they did down in Capernaum when he went there and the Bible says there were miracles that you like waterfalls coming from mountains like volcanic eruption like an earthquake shaking the earth the miracles that happened to multitudes of people it was astounding so it was the principle of toler mere toleration even like skeptical people mocking you looking at you like oh you think you're some uh, or they don't, they don't really see your real value, you know, versus the people that did see the real value. The results were completely different. So I, I met this man supernaturally. Let me give you a testimony. And uh, he showed up somewhere, and he was looking for uh, my archbishop friend and for him to come to his conference. And I, I, had, I had seen a flash of, a vision of him the day before, and my only thought was, when's his conference? He shows up. God didn't speak anything to me right then when I, asked the, when I saw it in the Spirit and I asked the question. The next day, he was sitting next to each other in the VIP tent at the, big, at the stadium crusade. And Archbishop asked me to speak there. You see that video clip online. A short one, then he asked me to come and do the... I'm going to speak in the prayer conference this week, which I've just done already two days. Tuesday and Wednesday, today's Thursday. Uh, we're not in town today in the city because demonstrations, which uh, God had me prophesy. Uh, on Tuesday, that he was going to shut down the demonstrations. You all have to excuse me, the environment here is so bad, the air, the dust outside, the pollution. Oh, it's been really, it's affected me dry. I've been moving so much. Some of you not seen me late, of late in a while because I've been busy. I've been speaking in conferences like every, every day for months on end. My schedule has been the most astounding. More than in some time. And the way to see that is to be on my YouTube channel. Of course, we try to post the things over from there to Facebook. But uh, um, sometimes we're so busy we don't always get to do it. I need, uh, <laughs> I need more staff to do that. It take everything and make sure every day, like massive amounts of material going out to social media. The clips alone, the short clips alone from all the messages I've done that are on our YouTube channel in, in their full uh, content would be in the hundreds and in, into the thousands. Guess what? I'm not scared of that kind of work. I, we're going to do that. I mean, let it be like everywhere someone clicks something, they're going to see my clip somewhere. I don't care. And if they get tired, then, you know, you can do something else. But people are willing, looking to be blessed by the millions. They're waiting for us. And the Lord has spoken to me about what we're going to do next is going to reach the entire world. I don't mean everywhere, because we can't be everywhere to everybody at the same time. I mean, that's, that's not even realistic, but to many nations, to multiply millions of people. I pray it could be to billions of people. 
And it's just a matter of the operations, the money, the resources, the facilities, the television broadcasting, the networks, the staff, the teams, the, the, to be able to do it on that level. And God's already spoken, God has already spoken to me that he's waiting for us there. It's not like he has three different kinds of will, like maybe it'll, it's okay if you do or don't. No, God has spoken. Now it's up to us to get there. And of course, we need his help because the provision comes from him and the people come from him and the ability and the energy and the strength and the wisdom and the creativity to do it all come from him. So without him, you're sunk anyway. You're just uh, swimming in the wrong, uh, you know, against the tide and the current is too strong uh, in this crazy world. So um, he's already ready. So uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com forward sign. Uh, is it the at symbol? YouTube.com forward sign. And then I think it's the at sign. DR for Dr. Thomas Manton. YouTube.com forward sign at DR Thomas Manton. We can put that in the comments later and of course on the, uh, the video that will go out onto uh, YouTube and everywhere else, uh, that those will be on the screen. Can you say amen? God bless you, those that are watching. I, I don't have the comments on, but I see a few friends on from... Is that Diana? God bless you, dear. Dr. Diana, are you there? I think I see you there. Woo! I have the comments off, but I see the thing on the top. God bless you, my dear. So good to see you. Others that are on, God bless you. So good to see you. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm thrilled that you're here. So, uh, somebody might have thought, hey, the prophet, well, he must have traveled. He must have went somewhere. He must have went to the Far East or something. No, 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 I'm here. But I've been in conferences every day speaking somewhere. Ah, you don't know how my schedule's been. It's been absolutely astoundingly busy. <laughs> but I'm the man for the job. I keep going. I don't stop. No matter how I feel, I'll go preach in the next event. I'm every day we're going somewhere. So hallelujah. We're doing more and more and more as we're going go more and more and more onward in this walk with God. So prayer is a thing. Now, Psalm 6, uh, 5, verse, is it 3? Psalm 5, verse 3 says, my, your, my voice you shall hear in the morning, Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto you, and I will look up. Now, what happens then is God says, oh, hi, you got my attention. Now I can touch you and speak to you. Again, I want to go back to, I'm on point seven or eight, but number, number one is to have a dialogue where God is speaking to you. Number two, point number two in the prayer points here, teach, Lord, teach us how to pray, if I can entitle this. Number two is pray for the glory of the Holy Ghost to get on your life, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because where his glory is, I just saw the angels here. Every time I'm in the studio here, the angels are here. There is... Um, there is a realm of breakthrough and blessing that comes when the Holy Spirit is residently upon you. You're in his presence. The other night, as I was preparing for the conference the next day on Monday night, we were just going to start on Tuesday in the city with thousands of people in attendance. Uh, you see the post on my Facebook page. You see well, the second day. I think we put some of the crowd shots there. That's just, uh, that's not even the biggest one. That's just, that's the, that's the afternoon session. <laughs> Uh, one of the afternoon sessions. Okay, so you see how many people are in attendance, thousands and thousands of people. So uh, I think at the I think at the tent crusade on Sunday in the stadium, I think there was probably about 10,000 people under the tent. And what a privilege it was for me to speak in that event. Now, and uh, the Lord, the Lord's amazing. So I wasn't praying like, give me power, give me breakthrough, take care of me, give me this, give me that. No, I just began to, I, had, I was totally calm and I just began to sing. And I stumbled upon some old worship songs from America from the 80s and 90s that have a heavy anointing upon them. And I was just singing. And I began to ascend through this 
earthly atmosphere down here with all the muck and mire and mess and things and situations and evil people and situations, you know what I mean? All of that earth life drama. And I begin to just ascend up. Listen to me. I begin to ascend up and break through this atmosphere and get into a higher place. And I was just like, wow. Then that's what, now what happens then is you connect with the glory of God. It's not like you're physically going there, but in the spirit. Now Psalm 5 verse 3, you're going to hear my voice in the morning. I'm going to look up. Psalm 121 also says, look up to the hills from whence coming to you, help you, help comes from the Lord. In other words, look up. Yes, and he says, I'm not asleep concerning Israel, but I'm not asleep concerning Thomas. I'm not asleep concerning you. What's your name? Say your name. God is not asleep concerning you and all of your situations. He wants to see you have the great breakthrough. You see, I've lost weight. You see that? Isn't that amazing? What prayer and fasting will do. The Archbishop said to me on Sunday night, he came to pray for me at the end. He was on his way out. I stopped on the way as he was going out. I wanted to grab his hand and said, let's pray. And he says, Prophet, you're different. I said, well, that's a fact, but I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, but how? What do you mean? He says, your belly, it's gone. Where did it go? You see that? <laughs> I said, too much prayer and fasting. Too much prayer and fasting. It's helpful. So I, I, want, I want you to catch this point. Let me make a point seven or point eight, whatever I'm, wherever I'm at. The realm of the glory is where you need to be. Now, there's an old song, one of these, one of these beautiful songs that was written by a real anointed psalmist. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. From afar. I don't want to worship from afar. I want to be near where you are. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the scripture says, where I am, there my servant will be also. John 14 then says, in another context, it says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I wouldn't tell you this. I wouldn't tell you a story. They're really there. And he says, I go to prepare the place for you. Yeah. And you're going to be there with me there one day. You see, but in the meantime, we're here on earth. And the model prayer of Jesus was what? Let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I'm breaking through right now in the, in the last 60, 120 seconds, whatever, into another realm of glory because my, my utterance is flowing here. But in the beginning, I was feeling very uh, 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 constricted by the environment. You know, the dust in the air. I had some contractors come to redo the tiles. They, they had exploded. Uh, the construction of the building. I don't know what happened. They said there were air pockets down there under the cement. And I'm sitting uh, on, the, on the side of my bed and I was, I was, I was praying, I think, and I, and I was reaching for the phone to make a... And all of a sudden I felt like this, this movement. I felt it in, 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 in the vibration of the air. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 the tiles began to explode. I started, I started lifting my hands. I said, God, please, what is this now? What, 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 what else? What is this now? And they begin to just explode. Now I'm thinking, I don't know what's under those tiles uh, until I found out there's hard cement from the, 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 the next floor when they built, they built this. I'm in a high rise. I'm on the top floor. I'm in the penthouse, the top floor of the building, the construction. So I'm thinking, you know, the tiles are breaking. I said, if I walk on them, will I go through them and end up down in Tanzania or... <laughs> on my way down into the earth somewhere. You know, you think like that for a minute. So I, I got along the side of the wall. It's a funny story. It's not really, it wasn't really that funny at the time. But now, you know. And I was, I was along, edging my way along the wall, not to be in the middle of the room. And I got out, and then the tiles were all buckled like that. So I, I called the contractors. I said, come here in the morning. And he says, like, no, the, the air pressure underneath, something wasn't done right. And they just begin to explode. So anyway, they were here. They came to replace the whole place with the, the whole room with tiles. They finished that this morning. And there's a lot of dust in the air. And let me tell you something else that happened about, I guess it's about two weeks ago now, right after that episode. Some days, I don't know, it was within two weeks. And um, 
uh, we had to wait for the contract. We had to just take things out of that room and wait for the contract to come back and fix them. They, they finally, they did it two days yesterday and today. They finished it this morning. So, uh, done. So, uh, about, so maybe up almost, I, I don't want to talk about the time. I'm wasting time talking about the date. A few days ago, okay, an earthquake happened to you. Can you believe it? And the whole, I'm sitting right where I am right now on my desk here, and I'm sitting here, and I was work, doing some work on my laptop. I was uh, posting some videos. I was doing some editing, and I was just working on some correspondence, and a lot of things at the same time, because I can multitask like that. And all of a sudden, the floor began to move. I heard this rumbling, and the whole floor under me began to move. I lifted my hands. I said, Lord, what now? Seriously, what is this? Then one of my people writes me, one of my friends writes me and says, uh, did you feel the earthquake? I'm like, earthquake? What are you talking about? And they sent me the thing. It was a 4.2. Thank you. If it was like 7.2, the building might not have been here. And I, God, the angels would have had to catch me up lest I dash my foot against a stone off the mountain cliff. You know, Lord have mercy. You know, and I, I, I don't foresee that ever happening where I am because of God's protection. I have my assignment to fulfill. But it, so if it was a 7.2 or 8.2, 8 .2, 8 .2, uh, nothing is left. Everything will fall. But uh, 4.2 earthquake. Can you believe it? Right in the area where I am in the little surrounding areas here in the city, I was like, what? The floor literally moved. The building moved. When you're up 200 feet up in the air, more than that, how many am I? I'm on the top floor. Uh, at least 200 feet. 250 feet up, maybe. High up like that. You think, well, you need the building to sustain your life, to hold you up. So I thought all these things are happening. The only thing I could think about was what I prophesied over this land and over this nation. The earth is the Lord's and the fullest of the world and all that they dwell therein, right? But he says the earth is groaning and travailing for the amount of... Take that as a number seven or eight. I want to put that point. Uh, the earth is the Lord's and the fullest of the world and all that they dwell therein. We need to pray about the things concerning this. Okay? Next point, eight or nine, wherever we are, is Isaiah 45, 11. Concerning the works of my hands, you command me. Concerning my sons, I'll show you things to come. Let's go to the next point. The scripture says the, the, the earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestations of the sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God. And uh, that's happening. And then God said, further, he said, he'll, he'll, his eyes will go over to and fro across the whole earth looking for one whose heart is perfect toward him. Now, this is the thing. And Romans 8, 28 says he, work, he makes all things work together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. He, he makes the things work for good, not for bad. So the Lord is, is expecting us to rise up and do great things. And he's serious about it. So like the call of God, I'm looking at different people. So I didn't finish the testimony about this man. So this man now appears. I saw him in a vision. He comes to look for the archbishop to come, and then he meets me, and then I had met him before, and we felt the, like a divine connection, whatever. And then I'm seeing like, it's like he's busy, and I'm thinking, I told him I'd be willing to come to his conference and all that if he wanted me, and he didn't get back to me, you see. So I'm like, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm too busy. Why do I have to chase that, go like I just need to go there and appear there? I don't have to do that. And so I was toying around with it, even the last, even today I was thinking, do I or don't I over the weekend if I want to go? I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I have other things to do. And then what's disturbing, in the, in, in the realm of prayer, we can begin to conquer this also. Why uh, some other people have stepped out and done certain things because they focused on it, but it's our job, and I was speaking about this yesterday in the conference, yesterday, Wednesday, today's Thursday. Yesterday in the conference, the video will come out in fact, I got a little bit scared. I'll, be, I'll tell you the truth. I got a little bit scared about what I was actually sharing. I thought it was too deep for the people. Uh, I was going real deep in the things of the kingdom. 
It was a very advanced. I was talking about big, lofty, high, huge things as far as business, industries, uh, prophesying. Now, when we go back and look at it later, I know it's going to be a masterpiece and it was ahead of its time. But when I get in that realm, I'm thinking, I want to meet the people kind of where they're at and preach to them and feel their love and their amens and their response. You know, there's part, part of us that want that. You know, like people should smile at you and love you, not look at you like, what? I mean, you know, you don't know how much some of them, some people got their hands up like this, they're getting it. Other people are like, they never heard anything like that. So it can affect you a little bit. So uh, the earth is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. And God will look for someone whose heart is perfect toward him. This is how it works. If you don't uh, apply yourself, how are you going to get it? Now, I said something else that, uh, so I was, I was really in, in an advanced flow yesterday. Uh, and some things I spoke of the nation on Tuesday that were astounding also yesterday. Uh, but I went into some deep waters. And then uh, I was feeling that uh, this thought, and I said, this is something scary I want to tell you. that, And this has been confirmed by other great leaders. God will even restrain some things from you if you're not ready for them. Like he, he qualifies the call, you, you know, he, you, you, what's the, uh, the call qualifies you for access, but then he, the qualification, meaning the approval process for the person who's called will take you through many things. And without this realm of dialogue in the realm of the spirit back and forth, how on earth are you going to get through to walk in the supernatural? The supernatural comes from prayer. It comes from praying without ceasing. You know, someone said, Prophet, they, they asked me, people ask me many times over the years, do you have this uh, 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 regimented time schedule? I said, my schedule is so erratic, different time zones all over the world, day and night, 24 hours a day, I'm doing different things. Sometimes I'll sleep a bit at night. Sometimes I don't sleep the whole night. I don't know why, maybe I, but that time zone thing is still in my blood from America and I'm, you know, uh, hours later, like half a day later, a third of a day later, whatever, and it's just, I, I haven't caught up with it. I don't know. And uh, sometimes I feel like I don't want to go to sleep. It, it, I'll tell you something scary. I'm so caught up in the now that I don't want to retire for the day and go to sleep because I feel bored by that. Like I'm giving up on something that I'm learning or doing right now. I'm always studying and I study late at night. And I watch reference materials, you know, great things. And I, I'm learning, I'm absorbing information and revelation all the time. And I don't want to switch that off to go, well, I have to go to bed now <laughs> to sleep. And so I'll sleep like late and catch a few hours in the morning and then I'm up and I'm at it again until again, all the way to the late the next night. So... What, you know, some people are more domesticated with their schedules. But I answer people like this because it's a fact. This is what I do. I pray without ceasing. I'm always in a dialogue with God. And as his prophet, it's a special grace and gift that God gives to his, uh, someone in the office of the prophet. But God speaks to me every single day. He talks to me all the time. I, I, it's amazing. Every message I get that I speak every day, I heard from God. God spoke to me. To pre you hear me say the Lord's, my, all my Facebook lives, all the videos we've done over, over years that you see, I'll open up with the Lord spoke to me. Yeah. And I'll share what is on his mind and heart. Now, thank God that these are recorded that can they even be, they can even be referenced later because if I, if I don't, uh, uh, if I didn't record it, how can I remember all that? Now, here's another dilemma I'm having, and I need partners to help me with this. There's one department of the ministry that's very bur burdensome. It's a, it's a real big burden to me. I want to get my books all around the world. And I want to tell you something. I'm writing more than 300 books. If I were to guesstimate the exact amount of books I have to, to do that are already like uh, recorded, uh, they've been dictated, they've been recorded, or they've been preached live, all the above, and they should go into book form. I, 
have easily more than 300. I've written about 11 or 12 books already. I don't know the exact number. Some of them, well, it's probably about 11 or 12. I have some of them here. One in the Office of the Prophet. Uh, some prophecies for the nation. I have a couple of, a couple of others of those. The, the Laws of Success, The Benefits of Excellence. Quickly, I'm going through the success strategies. All these are going to reprint. They're sold out. Folk, the Focus Factor. Wow, that's a great book. And the one I have now in hard print is, uh, is uh, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. You can get a copy of this. People are asking for this from all over the world. The forward is written by the great Archbishop Harrison Nanga. And he spoke three, wrote three pages about me and the, you know, the power of the grace that my ministry had to take the nation uh, through a very difficult time. Here's the forward right here, you can see. And it goes to the next, you see that? And it goes to the next page and the next page. Written by Archbishop Harrison Nanga. There it is, three full pages about the anointing and the glory we carry. I did another series, this is, beginning, this is an audio we have this, some of this on video also, uh, called The Importance of Honor. This is a great, great teaching, and uh, this is one of the books to be presented to the world that we're going to write and finish, and also a, a, a long, voluminous series that I did, 66 different videos called The Money is Coming. A prophetic word. I want to tell you it's really coming, because without huge resources, how on earth can you do huge things? Now, I appreciate every partnership seed that every partner sows. It's very helpful to the ministry. God bless you for sowing. You can do that. You can hear God. You can use my PayPal. You can use my M-Pesa in Kenya, however your Western Union money grab, however you want to uh, sow a seed. Thank you for being my partner. And I appreciate that. And I pray over every seed. Every seed that people sow is for their benefit. You know, they're going to get a harvest back for that. So that's a uh, a strategic way God gave us uh, on how to get blessed supernaturally because you sow the seed, he'll give you the harvest. However, in addition to that process of uh, mode of operation that God uses to bless his own beautiful saints is the huge amount of resources to do the big picture what's gonna which will touch millions of people across the globe. And that's what's coming. And the Lord said, the money is coming. It really is. And in the meantime, thank you, every partner and friend that's sowing into this grace. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give his peace and his power and his prosperity, miracles of breakthrough that you wanted for a new season of life. And I want to tell you again, a way to get there is to just launch out into the deep, in the realm of the spirit, and get into the... On the wings of prayer, God can take you to high places. And this is it. Then now I want to get into something else just for a minute, and we're going to, get, we're going to just jump off here, and we'll pick this up in another session. The realms of mediation between heaven and earth to bring, to bring breakthrough to people on the earth, it happens through deep prayer and intercession. Ephesians 6.20, 6.18 Excuse me, Ephesians 6, 18, uh, 20 said, I'm, your, I'm an ambassador for you, Lord, Paul said. Uh, but the, um, in the 18th verse says, praying with all kinds of prayers, types of prayers, intercessions, supplications. I want to say mediations, you know, doing transactions with heaven. Put things on the earth. Uh, remember the old song, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look on his wonderful face, then the things of this world become strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Isn't that a beautiful song? Oh yes, I love it too. And, uh, but look at, the, look at what it says. The things of this world go strangely dim, dimmer, as I look in your beautiful face and in the eyes and the power of your glory and grace. Uh, it's amazing. You know how many times in the scripture, especially in the, like in the Song of Solomon, come away, my beloved, come, come away with me. I love uh, Song of Solomon 711. Make a reference to that. You can, you can look that up and read that passage. S Song of Solomon, from Solomon, the Song of Solomon, 
chapter 7, verses from 11 to like 14. Come with me, my beloved, into the vineyard, and I'll show you things. And then we're going to take assessments of what you need to be doing uh, with, with my plan of action. Basically, this is a love letter also from the Spirit of the Lord to us. And uh, he's telling us how we can get on with his action plans. But now, uh, how can we do things if we haven't heard from God? You notice he said in the 11th verse, Song of Solomon 7 verse 11, Come with me, my beloved, into the vineyard. Come where? With who? With him. Meaning he's going to direct us there and then show us what to do. Are you seeing that? This comes from the place of prayer. We get the direction we need from heaven. <laughs> this is powerful. Thank you, Jesus. We get direction. Now, I wanted to read something from, uh, I hope I can do it now. Let me try. From Isaiah 43. Yeah, I might as well just do it. Isaiah 43, verse... Verse 15, I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. Uh, they li shall lie down together and not rise. In other words, they'll be extinguished. They'll be extinguished. They're, like, they're quenched like a wick. Now, th this is the things of the enemy that's coming against us. Again, the Lord will do this, but how is he going to do it unless we're walking with him in the place of communion, intimacy, friendship, connection, purpose? Amen? And then verse 18, the famous verse is right after that. Isaiah 43, 18 now. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall it, now shall it spring forth. Come on now. Now it shall, New King James, now it shall spring forth. Behold, I will do a new thing, the Lord says. Now it will spring forth. Will you not know it? Yes, you will. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And everything will then go on to honor me. And I'll give drink, refreshing, all the great things, water, living water, even to my my people, my chosen, for these I have formed for myself, and they will declare my praise. Verse 21. This is so powerful. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Remember not the former things. You're going to do a new thing. Shall it not now spring forth? Yes, of course it will. You know? What is that scripture? I am my beloved's. My beloved's is mine. I am my beloved. The Father, the Beloved One. I'm His Beloved, and my Beloved is now mine. Jesus said, as the Father sent me into the world, so now I send you into the world as sheep in the midst of wolves and who, whatever else. And He said, Jesus said, be clever as a serpent, crafty as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. Innocent and pure, but also clever and sharp. And how do you get these ways of becoming a warrior? Uh, a, a, a sharp, threshing instrument, like the scripture says in uh, some other place in Isaiah. I make you like a threshing instrument that beats down things and chews the mountains down to nothing. What is that, Isaiah 40, 41 in there somewhere in those uh, chapters of the 40s of Isaiah. I'm not going to take time to go look for them right now, but just go back. I'm in Isaiah 43. Go back a couple of chapters, you'll see. I'll beat the mountains down. I'll use you as my instrument of war, as my thresh, threshing instrument. Wow. How are you going to be used by God? Here's a question, and I'm, as I'm trying to wrap this here. It, how are you going to be used by God unless you're close with him in the palm of his hand? Can you be far away and he has to look for you and reach for you? I heard, heard uh, a great servant of the Lord was speaking today in another event. 
And while I'm here in the city, he went out to speak in this other event that I was toying, as I was saying, going to, but I decided not to. Uh, but he, he was chased by the host to go because he's such a great giant in the land. He, and I am too, but, you know, we do different things. But he, so anyway, he went, but he said something. He says, some people, in his opening statement in the first session, today, it was live online, I watched it. He said, some people are not used by God because they're not loyal. They're not connected. They don't have any accountability. They don't have any direction. They're wild. They're like wild, running everywhere. They're a law unto themselves. They're doing their own thing. And God can't uh, trust them with a lot. I have to tell you, prayer is the way to break through to get yourself free from all levels of oppression. That's point 10, point 11, where we are. We're going to make this into maybe 12 points. Let me say the next one. You uh, begin to break oppressions off of you when you pray, when you fast and pray. Things that are evil begin to leave you. You know, the devil, the devil is very clever at studying mankind. He's been doing it a long time. He knows what situations are going on with you, where ways he can oppress you and limit you and try to throw roadblocks in your way and oppressions over you. And when you stop praying and stop staying in the realm of the glory of the Holy Ghost, these things begin to uh, trouble people. And sometimes they don't, they don't realize it enough. But when you get in the realm of the glory and the anointing comes and breaks loose on you and the glory begins to uh, uh, be manifested in your world and in your personal life, in your life, oh my God. <laughs> the, devil runs for his, the devil runs for his existence. The Bible says in James 4, 7, very powerful, watch this now. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God, and then the devil will, f and resist the devil, after you've submitted yourself to God, and then the devil will run and flee away from you as one in terror, one terrified. But first came the submission thing. It wasn't, I, I resist you, Satan, in the name of, of Jesus, and you got to go and... And, but you know what? The first part of that prayer in James 4, 7, that declare, declaration was so uh, deep. Submit yourself to God. First is that. Now what happens is now the, the Lord begins to work with you more. These things get fine-tuned through prayer and fasting, I'm telling you. And I'll continue in this, but uh, we need to see the breakthrough. And the devil needs to run. Loopholes that open doors to things in your life that are evil or oppressive or whatever, or limit, limitations and all that, all of those things get closed that are open and the things that are wrong get broken off when you begin to walk in the realm of the Spirit, of the Holy Ghost, and His glory begins to come and prayer brings all of that to us in Jesus' name. Wow. Uh, so I'm Thomas Manton IV. God bless you. It's been a privilege to come and serve you the word of the Lord today. And thank you for being my partner. The information will be on the screen. Uh, but in the headings of all of the, you don't have to wait for me to do anything because all of the headings of the titles of all my posts on Facebook have my details on how to sow into this grace. They're there. You see them. The PayPal link, paypal.me forward sign Thomas Manton is there. If you're in Kenya, the M-Pesa number is there. 0706164191. It's in all of the headings and some of the comments also in the post. You go post by post. You'll find my contact details there. I don't have to do another thing. It's all there. Of course, my website is thomasmanton.com. T H O M A S M A N T O N dot com. C O M. And we don't need the www anymore or the http double slash colon. You don't need that because the hyperlink works now just with the name of the domain, domain thomasmanton.com. That's all you need. The YouTube channel, please subscribe, like, and share with other people. There's very powerful things on there and a lot of updated things over the last few months uh, for those who have missed me on Facebook uh, with the phone. 
Uh, they're, they're all there on YouTube. You'll see the succession of meetings. And when they're posted is about the time that just before that we did the live meeting and then we posted a couple of days later, uh, give or take. And uh, YouTube.com forward sign at Dr. Thomas Manton. And these are all in the headings of the titles on Facebook. And I do that on purpose to give people the chance. I don't ever want God to say to me, well, you wanted people to connect, but you didn't tell them how. I've told you how in the thousandfold over months and years, the links are there and they work. Use my PayPal, sow a seed. Use our Mpesa, sow a seed. If you're, some people like to send Western Union a MoneyGram, uh, MoneyGram seems to be a little bit less on the fees. And you can send it from anywhere you are, cash to uh, uh, my name and location. If you need information for that, write me a message anywhere, DM through Facebook or uh, through WhatsApp to plus 254-706-164191. And you will get my uh, WhatsApp a WhatsApp to me directly. If someone's coming into something larger and you have bank, uh, you want to do a bank transfer or whatever wire, contact me. I'll send you the banking details. God bless you. I love you so much. I'm praying for you. Let's take this into account that God said in Isaiah 43, 19, I'm doing a new thing. Will it not now spring forth? And we're going to see the glory of God. It's time to pray. Prayer is urgent. We talk about many things, about breakthrough, blessing, revival, you know, things that are supposed to happen. But how are they all birthed into existence? Through prayer, through fasting, through consecration, through worshiping God, through going up to where he is, coming bold, going boldly before the throne of grace in the time of any need and saying, God, I need answers on this. And he'll begin to speak as a man speaks to his friend. When you become friendly with God, he becomes more friendly with you, and things begin to progress in your world to higher places. And that is definitely his plan of action. Uh, don't be one that's limited because you didn't pray enough. Don't be one that's limited because you didn't study enough. You didn't to show yourself approved as a workman of the Lord, needing not to be ashamed, right? and you're actually... Uh, should be rightly dividing the word of truth and walking in revelation and power. And also, the kingdom of God is not manifested in the flesh, but it's by righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But demonstration of power, the supernatural, the miraculous, is what is needed, even for, for you yourself to have an enjoyable life in the kingdom of God. We need the presence of the Lord. Uh, and everything else will begin to work itself out. Now there are the other laws of, of the gospel that we need to operate in the laws of action. A different topic of discussion, but they are there. But prayer is like, I see like it's almost like a forgotten thing. Some people really hyper talk about it and they're praying and screaming, especially in Africa. And that's great, you gotta do that. Because that breaks you loose in the realm of the spirit. But I, I, I want to cover it in today here, just the fact about the intimate dialogue that you can have with God, that he can talk, you can talk to him and he can talk to you. And then the presence of the Holy Ghost. Yesterday, while I was speaking, a major pastor, uh, a really faithful uh, man of God, was in the meeting and I had prayed for his wife. The glory of God came upon her. She was just lit up from head to toe. She went to Monday, changed her hairstyle from Sunday, and everything was different about her. She looked very subdued. But a woman of God in the church, maybe a bit tired from all the schedule and all that, and the Lord brought a word of refreshing. The, the Lord spoke to me, says, pray and release the fire upon her. The, power, the fire of God came upon her. I took a photograph yesterday of her and her husband. She's beaming with light, totally... And the husband said, she's transformed in every way since Sunday. And this, was, this, is a, this is a servant of God. Not someone that's out in the world that needs to be saved and needs breakthrough because they're doing wrong things. This is a faithful woman of God serving in the ministry seven days a week. Her whole life is with her husband and in the ministry unto the Lord. 
And sometimes people get tired along the way, or there's some uh, affliction or oppression, maybe some sickness, whatever comes. And the Lord wants to break it all. And it happened. Now the husband said to me, the fire came, was, was burning on top of his head as I was speaking yesterday. Yesterday. In the meeting. And he said, what is your number? I want to sow a seed. And he sent a nice seed to my phone. I was like, okay, good. He's honoring the anointing. Honoring the grace. When I came off the pulpit and came back to where uh, the section in the front where we're sitting, there are other pastors there, the pastor's section, we're all there. Yeah, they wanted to sow seeds and put seeds in my hand. Uh, to tap the grace, yes. So it's real. So an exchange reality is financial. So do it. And, and I don't want to talk too long about that. I love to deliver the message, but also give you the opportunity to sow seed into this anointing and grace. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you. I look forward to hearing from you in that regard. PayPal and PESA, however, get in touch with me. And I love seeing our partners sowing seed. When you sow, how, someone might say, how do I become a partner of the ministry, Dr. Thomas? Well, when you sow into this grace, I consider you now a partner. And your name is there. Your face is there. Your life is there. I see your family, your people, your situations, your business life, whatever you're doing. And I am praying for you to be blessed. Oh, yes. You know the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. When I see you, you've entered into my world. Now I'm going to take you on as a project of prayer to pray for your breakthrough and your blessing. And I do this all the time, God knows. And people are receiving miracles. The realm of the supernatural is real. And it all starts with our connection and communication with God, the power of prayer. I'll be back on the next broadcast. God bless you. Love you all very much. Have a great day. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119-105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent Prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.